These rocks are so easy. Give me something a little harder, I hear you say. Or maybe you didn't say that. You just said, hey, prof, I'm really into these igneous rocks. Can you tell me a little bit more about their chemistry? Hey, I'm here for you. Let me tell you the story of a little magma chamber filled with minerals and why the order in which they chill out matters. Once upon a time, there was a magma chamber. It was the hottest club in town and all the hottest minerals hung out there. So let's say you're a mineral with a lot of magnesium or iron in your crystal lattice structure. You can really only party under certain conditions. It has to be really hot, really jump and party. As soon as things start cooling down, you're one of the first minerals to get solid. And once you do, you become heavier and stickier and you stick to the minerals that are already sort of piling up around the outer walls of the magma chamber. Now the magma party is a little smaller and it's in the middle of the magma chamber and some of the minerals are gone. Okay, so now let's say that you're one of the minerals left in the magma, like say amphibole. Okay, so you're floating around and you're moving and all of these things are starting to get a little bit cooler and cooler. And pretty soon you start feeling heavy and rigid and sticky. And now you're in the growing pile of minerals on the outer chamber walls. It's getting smaller and smaller in here and there's only a few of us left until there's only quartz and mica and plagioclase left in the melt. Then as the party ends, those last holdouts crystallize and form rocks at the very center of the magma chamber. Okay, so let's look at the ideas behind that story of the mineral party. Some minerals like olivine and pyroxene don't have much silica or potassium or sodium in them. They have more metals like iron and magnesium, and so they have a higher melting temperature. That means that as the temperature of the magma chamber decreases, they're the first to crystallize. Any rock that contains mostly minerals with less silica and more metals is called mafic. Minerals that are mostly made up of silica and potassium have the lowest melting temperature and therefore are the last to form crystals. Okay, so these are the felsic minerals. Now what about the minerals that have both silica and metals more or less equally? Well, those are the intermediate metals and they tend to crystallize at intermediate temperatures. Make sense? Okay, that brings me to the geologist called Bowen and the reaction series he described. Okay, so Bowen saw the different mel melting points and put them into this handy table that shows the temperature of a mineral that crystallizes and the composition of the rocks that form and the sequence in which the minerals would, that crystallize out of the magma. Okay, so this is a handy chart, so let's take a little bit of time to go through it. Okay, first we have ultramafic rocks. These crystallize at temperatures that only exist deep in the crust in most places. It has the highest melting temperature and contains olivine and calcium rich plagioclase almost exclusively. Next is mafic. This forms rocks called gabbro if intrusive and basalt if extrusive. It is the first rock to form in a magma chamber. It contains a bunch of minerals like olivine, pyroxene, amphibole, and plagioclase. These minerals are all low in silica content. Then we get to diorite and andesite, the intermediate rocks. They have amphibole, biotite, plagioclase, and bits of pyroxene. And the last to form, because these minerals have the lowest melting temperature, are the felsic rocks, granite and rhyolite. These have minerals that are almost exclusively silica and potassium rich. This is orthoclase, muscovite, and quartz. So now you know what that crazy chart means and why it is so important to igneous rocks, right? Now go out into the world and impress your friends and family.